Hi there again, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Vincent Lau coming at you from Western University of London, Ontario, uh, Critical Care Western Program in regards to another point of care ultrasound uh, uh, hemodynamic series case. Uh, I'm co authoring this with Dr. Robert Arnfield, and our second case that we're uh, presenting to you is uh, one of distributive shock. Again, just as a primer, please visit the westernsono.ca website for uh, Dr. Arnfeld's Stroke Volume Determination Podcast How To, uh, which will be uh, a good primer to uh, understanding advanced hemodynamics uh, that will be seen in this uh, case series. So this is a case of a female relapsed AO male salvaged chemotherapy approximately about a week ago. Comes in with febrile neutropenia with a neutrophil count of 0.1. Uh, right middle lobe, right lower lobe pneumonia. She's already on vanco, uh, amy, and caspofungin uh, by uh, hematology. And she's on the ward uh, hypotense with uh, three liters of crystalloid already given. She's brought down to uh, the ICU uh, for central line and vasopressors, uh, for which she's otherwise a DNR, no CPR, no defib, no intubation. She started on lebo of uh, 10 mics per min and uh, vasopressin of uh, 2.4 units per min. And despite this, her uh, sepsis uh, is ongoing with a uh, systolic blood pressure of, uh, of 90s, heart rate 70s, satting 95% on 3 liters, rest rate 20, and otherwise still febrile 39. Otherwise, she has uh, normal end organ perfusion with normal lactate, urine output, and creatinine. This is her uh, right middle lobe, right lower lobe chest x ray prior to coming down to the ICU. So again, have we optimized her hemodynamics at this point? She, does she have isolated vasoplegic shock secondary to febrile neutropenia and sepsis from a right middle or right lower lobe pneumonia? Or does she have some cardiogenic or obstructive shock component as well? She has no prior cardiac history. However, she does have active AML cancer, which is relapsed. So does she have active PEs? Then we've also uh, reviewed on the westernsono.ca website uh, the uh, entity of uh, septic cardiomyopathy. So getting to the POCUS images themselves, So again, we start in the right apical region and we see A-line pattern primarily with uh, only a few B-lines and uh, sliding lung. Uh, the patient has a hepatized right uh, axillary line uh, lung with the diaphragm here and the liver below, but a definitely hepatized lung above it with consolidation as well. The patient also has a small right-sided pleural effusion uh, above the diaphragm here. Uh, not worth tapping at this point, uh, but definitely consolidated lung above the diaphragm. And just comparing to the left-hand side, A-line pattern again. And curtain sign, no consolidation, no pillar fusion on the left. So getting to the echo itself, uh, we see that the patient has a normal left ventricular ejection fraction with no uh, obvious uh, pericardial fusion in this view. We'll be throwing some color over top of the valves at this point, and we see that the patient has no obvious MR and no obvious AI. Uh, there's some breathing artifact into the view, but uh, otherwise uh, no obvious valvular regurgitation. We'll switch to a parasternal short axis view that shows that the patient's heart has a normal ventricular uh, ejection, uh, normal function uh, at this time. So going to a subcostal view, we see that the patient has, again, normal left ejection fraction. Right side also looks normal in size and normal in function, maybe even hyperdynamic. And we see the IVC is plethoric in size, large, uh, with no respiratory elevation uh, on a non-intubated, spontaneously breathing patient. So again, we see that the patient's uh, IVC is plethoric and is distended at 2.5 centimeters in size. Again, we have uh, confirmed with 2D imaging that uh, the patient has isolated uh, vasoplegic shock. But just to delve further and uh, confirm that on uh, POCUS hemodynamics, let's just start with the apical four chambers. Can't see the right side as well for the uh, RV, but uh, the patient did have a normal right-sided hyperdynamic RV on subcostal imaging. Left side looks preserved in terms of its function at this point. Color thrown across, again, no obvious MR, no obvious AI, and a primary blue jet of LVOT, which we're going to pulse wave Doppler across uh, this blue jet. And we see with our pulse wave Doppler here, above with our equal sign again, that we get a tracing of 19.8 centimeters for VTI. Uh, down here and uh, we throw this into our, our um, cardiac output uh, algorithm and uh, we get a cardiac output of 5.7 liters per minute. So again going over the volume of a cylinder uh, seen better on the podcast on the westernsono.ca website by Dr. Arnfeld. We calculate out a stroke volume of 77.3 cc's per beat which is uh, normal and greater than the 60 cc's per beat that we would expect. 
And further on, we're just going to do some teaching in regards to cardiac index. We know that the cardiac output is your stroke volume times your heart rate, so it's that 5.7 liters per minute that we saw before. We can calculate a BSA using the height in centimeters of a patient, the weight in uh, kilograms of a patient divided by uh, 3,600. And taking the square root of that, we get a BSA of uh, 1.91. Uh, cardiac index is simply cardiac output divided by BSA. And so we get a cardiac index of 3 liters per minute uh, per meter squared, uh, which is greater than 2.2, which is our uh, cutoff for a normal uh, uh, cardiac index. So based on this, using the point-of-care ultrasound septic shock decision support to algorithm uh, developed by Dr. Archfield and Dr. Corey, uh, we see that the patient has a normal left ventricular ejection fraction and a distended IVC. So we would continue on with the previous management, which has already been instituted of uh, levofed or norepinephrine. So as a case resolution for this unfortunate female with relapsed AML and right-sided pneumosepsis, uh, she did have stable blood pressures in the 110 range uh, with uh, levo at 15 and vaso 2.4. We minimized fluids to keep her lungs dry. Uh, unfortunately, despite uh, vanco Amy and caspofundrin for her right-sided pneumosepsis, she had worsening pneumonia with PO2s falling to 50 millimeters of mercury and DSATs on 15 liters uh, non-rebreather. She otherwise failed BiPAP, and because she was a previous DNR with no intubation, uh, the family elected for comfort and health measures. So despite the uh, unfortunate end to this case, the take-home message is that VTI can be a means of reassurance or resuscitative goals in a quantitative fashion. Again, sometimes when we do uh, POCUS ultrasounds for echo and lung, uh, we always want to see a, a change in management, but uh, this was uh, reassuring that uh, in this case we were able to quantitatively verify that we were heading in the right direction despite the unfortunate uh, end to this case. And again, we can uh, obtain a cardiac index uh, through VTI, stroke volume, and cardiac output assessments. Uh, we just need a, a BSA to be calculated from their height and weight. So thank you for following us along in this hemodynamic series. There will be further cases along the way that will hopefully um, whet your appetite and uh, pique your interest. Uh, please review the westernsono.ca stroke volume determination screencast done by Dr. Arnfield prior to delving further into this hemodynamic series. Thank you very much and have a good day.